Hello friends and welcome to our Lake Point Kids online family experience. I'm Ms. Rachel. And I'm Shannon. We have a fun, uh, hello? Hello? Shannon, are, are you still there? Miss Rachel, I'm here. What just happened? It's so dark here. Is something wrong with the lights? I, I don't know, I better go check. Just, just a minute. Oh, yikes! Oh, finally, the lights are back on. That was kind of crazy. Pardon? What's up, Master Ethan? Oh, we're having our issue with our lights today. Well, that's not good. Uh, I guess perhaps we should prepare for these blackouts. Uh, this is a bummer. I mean, it's kind of hard to do a show when we don't know if we're gonna have the lights on or not. You know what? I have a great idea. Why don't I go grab some flashlights and candles? <gasps> Wonderful, that's a great idea. Well, you go get that. I better start talking about our theme before the lights go out again. Today is our final day of our theme. It starts with the letter I. It is da 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 indescribable. We're taking the idea that our God, the one who made the mountains and the valleys, the creator of every animal, bird, and insect, the mastermind who carefully crafted human beings, is so remarkable, it's beyond our description. I mean, how could we adequately talk about his greatness? It's more than our words could ever say. And one of the ways where God is indescribable is with his creativity. God's creativity is astonishing, astounding, and well indescribable. Just think about all he has done, all he has made, it's bursting with utmost creativity. But God isn't the only one who is creative, you are too. In fact, our definition of creativity involves both you and God. Let me share it with you. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. I'll count to three and we'll say it together. One, two, three. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. Since God made people in his image, we have characteristics that are similar to his. Now, not on the same level, obviously, as we certainly have our limits in being human, but just as God is creative, he made you to be creative and he wants you to be creative. And just like God is creative in so many ways, there are a ton of ways where we can be creative too. Often when we think of creativity, we think of things like scissors and sparkles, but it's actually so much more. Anytime where you are imagining something, making something new, or trying a fresh way to solve a problem, you're being creative. Creativity can include arts and crafts, sports, designing and building, music and drama, problem solving and science, inventing new things, writing new songs or stories, helping others, planning, decorating, baking and cooking, and so much more. And so today, we're going to look at God's amazing creativity and the ability he gives us to be creative as well. Oh, well, I guess I finished that just in time. What was that, Pastor Ethan? Oh, someone is coming here to work on the lights? Oh, well that's good. I'm here with the flashlight and the candle. Great! Oh, look, we have our lights on again. You know, I was thinking about something fun we could do with or without the lights on, and I have an idea, but it will involve some popcorn. Okay, I'm back with the popcorn. Oh, it smells great, and I have the video ready. Do you want some salt? Uh, yes, please. More, please. More, please. More, please. More, please. Oh, that looks perfect. Okay, check out this quick clip about how we can worship God with our creativity. Oh, perfect timing. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Your best silly face? The school picture day smile? That look you get when mom tells you to get out of bed for school? <laughs> Whatever you may see in the mirror, something amazing is true. You are a mirror. God made you in his very own image to reflect who he is to the world around you. That's right. When people look at you, they can see a little piece of what God is like. Not the way your mouth is shaped or the color of your eyes, but when you choose to encourage someone, hey, great job today. Others can see God's kindness. When you paint a picture, they catch a glimpse of a God who imagined the whole world. 
When you help your friend solve an argument, they can see a reflection of the God who made peace with us. The God who thought of the entire universe made you to look like him. And when you use your imagination, you can show the whole world a little piece of what he's like. That's why creativity is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. You know, I've been thinking of different ways how we could have light today. I mean, we have our flashlights and candles, but is there any other way we could have light? And then I got a bright idea. Of course there is. All we need is a little bit of science. friends, and welcome to another segment of Science with Shannon. As you can see, our power has been a little bit off today. The lights keep flickering on and off. So I came up with this very creative, very fun, yet very useful idea. Today we are going to create something so fun. Ah, I'm so excited. We are going to make glow in the dark slime. Whoever said you can't have fun in the dark has never made glow in the dark slime. That's for sure. For this experiment, you will need Elmer's Glow Glue, some slime activator, and this one even has a cool scent to it. You'll also need a mixing bowl and a spoon, and that's it. So first off, you're gonna pour all the contents of the Glow Glue into the bowl. Alrighty, now we're gonna add in the slime activator. This is the fun part. Now we gotta mix it all together. Oh, I can see the texture changing already and it smells delicious too. Sometimes you might wanna get your hands in there too just to get it to form in the right way. And voila, would you look at that? We have a slime. Isn't that so cool? Look at how it stretches. And it's got glitter and it's such a bright pink. I was having so much fun the other night, I decided to make another one for Miss Rachel because I know she loves the color blue and who knew it would be so useful today with this blackout we're experiencing. Do you want to see the fun and cool effect? I know you've been waiting so long. All right, it's finally time. Here we go. We've been looking this month at our verse from Psalms. Well, our verse is in Psalms 145 verse 3. There is another verse I'd like to share with you. It's found in Psalms 119 verse 105. It says, Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It's like a light that guides me. So just like having light helps us know where to step, or not to step, and what path to take to get somewhere, the Bible helps us choose the next steps in how we live. Not like actual steps. Like, should I step here or there? But instead, the choices we make. The Bible helps us know how to live our lives. And how do we know what the Bible says? By reading it, studying it, and memorizing it. And speaking of memorizing, let's look at our month's verse. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand just how great you are. Psalms 145 verse 3 nerve. Okay, now let's rehearse the verse. One, two, three. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand just how great you are. Psalms 145 verse 3 nerve. And since the last Sunday of the month, for our Memory Verse Challenge Day, we are gonna have Freeze Dance Sunday. So let's see those creative dance moves. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand just how great you are. Psalms 145 verse 3, Nerve. Lord, you are great. You 
are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand just how great you are. Psalms 145 verse 3, Nerve. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalms 145 verse 3, Nerve. Great job, everyone. So creativity, how do you describe it again? Well, creativity is imagining what you can do because you're made in God's image. And our bottom line or our focus point of today is God created you to share his story. Let's say it together. One, two, three. God created you to share his story. Hmm, share his story. Like how? By grabbing a megaphone and shouting it out at the street corner? By writing a letter to the newspaper and having it published? By making a video and posting it on YouTube? Well, those are all creative ways to share God's story, but they're a little bit complicated and I don't know that they'd be very effective. I mean, I want to share God's story but I also want people to listen to it. I probably wouldn't want to listen to anyone shouting in a megaphone on the street corner. What do you guys think? How can we best share God's story? Well, I think there's a few guys who can help us out with that today. So grab your popcorn and get ready for John, Brandon, Kellen, and Horvath. <laughs> hmm. A six-legged chicken. It's chicken for everyone. Hmm. Sheep that can shear themselves. <laughs> A pair of glasses that'll let you see behind you. Oh yeah. Beef jerky made out of chicken? Novels! Oh, this is the best idea yet! Ah! Oh, where do they come from? <laughs> so strange. Clothes that are made from other clothes! Pat Sajak, scented deodorant. <laughs> Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and we're wearing awesome mustaches. Yes, we are. Why? Because we're chefs, and every self respecting chef has a mustache. Gordon Ramsay doesn't have a mustache. Okay, that's one. Bobby Flay, Emeril, Martha Stewart. Subpar chefs. They're like the most famous chefs in the world. Below par. Okay, who are the, the above par chefs then with mustaches? Chef Louis. Chef Louis, the guy from The Little Mermaid? Uh -huh. That doesn't count. Oh, okay, what about uh, Chef Remy from Ratatouille? Oh, no, 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 those are whiskers, plus he's a rat and a cartoon, uh. doesn't count. Aha, what about the greatest chef in history, Chef Boyardee? He was a genius. <laughs> okay, you got me there. <laughs> We're dressed like this because we are making an old family recipe today. Snickerdoodle soup surprise? Not your family's recipe. Uh -huh. An old family recipe from someone who knows stuff. Ooh. Bonjour. Come on in, have a seat. Oh, this is cool. Tell us who you are and what you know. I'm Madeleine Lemold, but I am called Maddie, and I know quite a bit. I know every Renner de Tour de France for the last two decades. I know how to put together a Bugatti racing engine, oh. but I am most known for what I can cook. Great, you're a cook. <laughs> Quoi? No, 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 no. I am a chef. And by the way, I do not have a mustache. 
it, it suits you. Merci. So, uh, what, what are you going to cook for us today? Le poisson! Le poisson? <laughs> le poisson! Oh, I love le poisson. Oh, me too. <laughs> but uh, no. We are making a 250-year-old recipe passed down in my family for generations. Ooh, sounds mysterious. What's the recipe for? French fries. You know, I heard that uh, French fries actually originated from the country of Belgium. Oh, so they're really Belgian fries. Yeah. No, they are French fries. Yeah, but if you look on the internet... They are French fries. Okay. Some people like to peel the potatoes. My family's recipe leaves the skin on. Now we cut them. All right, where do we... Voila! Start. You batter the fries. All right. Oh! This batter is what makes these french fries so special and so delicious. <laughs> this batter is made with flour ground from the wheat kernels from the finest wheat fields in France. <laughs> and then we add a precise amount of white grape juice squeezed by and directly into the bowl. Mm. And then, of course, this batter contains the perfect blend of our secret family herbs and spices. Mm, yum, better up. You yep. put the duck fat in the pot. All right, this is duck fat? Yes, of course. <laughs> what else would you cook in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, Chef Maddie, uh, is, there, uh, is there like a recipe or something in a cookbook or on the internet that in case anyone wants to try this the at home? The internet? A cookbook? Quoi? No, 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 no. This is a secret family recipe. I was taught this recipe by my father, who learned it from his mother, who learned it from her great aunt, who learned it from her great grandfather, Chef Jean Baptiste Honoré Le Monde. Did he have a mustache? We do not tell people the secret of the recipe because then, then everyone would know it. Well, I just thought that if the recipe is, is so delicious that you would want other people to know it so they could, you know, share in the deliciousness. This is something I have not thought about. It, it has always just been a recipe passed down in my family. Oh, well, I can't wait to pass it down my throat and to my belly. So are we going to cook these Belgian fries or what? Yes, of course. You must bake them bit by bit at 375 degrees until they are golden brown. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you, you're sticking around to watch us cook them, right? Oh, I'm afraid not. No, I... I do not think I can keep this recipe to myself any longer. Everyone should know, no? No. I mean, yes. I mean, what? Be on the lookout for Chef Maddie's cookbook where all of my secrets will be revealed. Magnifique! Oh. Bye! She didn't even say bye. Well, she's in a hurry. Do you, you want to put these in the oven? Wee <sighs> wee. Oui, oui. Oh, you speak French now. No, 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 no. I, uh, I have to tinkle. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <sighs> ah! Oh! I had to tinkle and put on some skin. Ow! It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's that delicious smell? Oh, we're cooking up some French fries, Kellen. Yeah, they should be ready by the time the story's over. Mm. Well, let's get to it. The story today comes from Jesus' most famous sermon in the Bible. And since Jesus preached this sermon from the side of a mountain, today we call it the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon from the Mouths? I thought all sermons were from the mouths. No, the Sermon on the Mount. It's short for mountain. A short mountain is called the hills. Okay. So everyone, this is my friend Horvath. Um, I'm guessing he's here to help me tell today's story. 
Thank you all for having me on your shows, Kellens. I am Horvath, and I am an expert in combining the mental trainings of learning the Bible with the physical trainings of making your muscles bigger. Perfect. So I'll tell the story, and Horvath, you give us some exercises to help us remember it. All right, let's do this. Okay, so Jesus was talking to a crowd of people from the side of a mountain. One of the things he said to his followers was this, you are the salt of the earth. Ah, first exercise. Okay, we are going to make salt for the earth. All right, so I put my hands on my hips like this and then rotate around. Click, 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 click. This is called the salt grinder. We do it 24 times. Ready? Go, one. Click, click, click. 14. Click, click, click. Elastic girl. Click, click, click. Three hole punch, click, 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 24. Hey, we made salt of the earth. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Yeah. But what do you think Jesus was talking about when he said you are the salt of the earth? <gasps> yeah, so when Jesus said you are the salt of the earth, I'm pretty sure he wasn't saying we actually taste like salt. But salt is used to make food taste better, and salt is used to keep certain foods fresh. So maybe if we're the salt of the earth, Jesus was saying that we have the opportunity to make the world better somehow. You see? <laughs> okay. Um, Jesus kept going. He said, you are the light of the world. Ah, second exercise. We are not salt anymore. Click, 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 click. We are lights. So let us pretend to be lighthouses. Stand straight and rotate your head like a light all the way around. I call this, turn the lights on. We do it 137 times. Go, one, 26. Grape nuts. Willie Shoemaker. 137. Oh, what's next, Kellens? Right. So first Jesus called people who followed him salt, and then he said we were light. Well, what do you think that means? Oh, no, don't, 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 don't do that again. No, no, no. Here, uh, maybe this will help. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. People don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl, right? Right. Right. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they'll see the good things you do, and they'll bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. I think I understand. You do? No. Ah, that's okay. It can be confusing sometimes. Jesus was saying that if you are someone who trusts and follows him, you should live in such a way that brings light into what can sometimes be a dark world. You should be looking for creative ways to do things and creative ways to love others. And when we do that, it will point others to God. All right, let's do this. Seventh exercise. I call this one ladders to heaven so we can point people to God's. Okay, so we raise our hands and legs is at the same times, just like we are climbing the ladders to heaven. And then when we reach the top, we point like this. Huh? Okay, we climb 45 of the ladder rungs. Go. One, 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 one. Six, 45. Now point to God because he is the most important. Ah, ah, ah. I think I need to take the elevator. Good idea. Bye, Horvath. Uh, going down. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, 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 uh. Well, just in case that wasn't clear, it boils down to this. You have the light inside of you, and it's up to you to decide how to use it. You can keep it to yourself, or you can let it shine. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, what are some ways we can shine our lights? Oh, there are so many different ways because everyone is so different. Sometimes it's as simple as being nice to someone. Anyone can do that. 
But sometimes you need to use your own unique talents and abilities to point people to God. What's important is that you don't keep it to yourself. I mean, do you ever think about how you'd feel if someone didn't point you to God? I'd feel so left out. Yeah, Jesus has been such a big part of my life. I want everyone to know him. Exactly. You're the best, Kellen. Thanks for shining your light. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Let's do it. All right, reveal the question. Who first told you about God's story? What a great question, because those were people who shone their light to us. For, for me, it was a, a, a guy named Brett in my senior class at high school. Oh, cool. For me, it was my, my grandmother. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. For me, it was my mom when she took me to Sunday school for the first time. Awesome. Are the fries ready yet? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Oh, yum. Yum, too. Also yum. Mm, these are amazing. Yeah, <laughs> good. We gotta tell people about this. I think you're right. I think we should. No, now! We need to tell people right now. Hey, everybody, you gotta try this. Okay, we'll see you guys next week for another so and so show. Oh, it's all good. Try it right now. Right now! John. John! I'm ready to get I'll be running. <coughs> you do the spin! <coughs> All of them! Says that he is a light to the world and so if we have a relationship with him that light is in us we need to let that light shine for others to see because it will help to point people to God he also said we are the salt of the earth that means just like salt makes things better we can make things better and there are lots of ways to shine a light or be salt encouraging others with your words, helping others with your hands, listening to others with your ears, and befriending someone with your time. Sometimes all you need to do this is a little bit of consideration, like when you smile at others, or hold open a door for someone, or pick up some litter, while at other times, you'll want to use your creativity as well, using the skills God has given you, like perhaps making a card for someone who is unwell, or helping a classmate with their math homework, or baking a treat for your family. The main point, though, is to treat others the way Jesus would. Remember, Jesus loves people, and while he was here on the earth, he served them and he helped them. He took time for them and he befriended them. And when you do that, love people, take time for them and befriend them, you will be giving people a look at God's story and his love for them. Remember, God created you to share his story. Whether you are using your words or your actions, your skills or your time, you can let your light shine, be some salt, and help make the world a better place full of God's love. It's time to bring it home now with our small group time. So along with your parent, listen to today's instructions. For our first activity, you are going to do some different tasks with a blindfold on. Parents, think of an activity or two for your child to do without being able to see. Perhaps folding laundry, or walking in a straight line, or grabbing something specific out of the fridge, or writing their name. You can make this as easy or as hard as you'd like. The purpose of this task is to see how much of an important role light truly plays in our life. Then take time to talk about ways your child can let their light shine in the places God has put them and why that is important. All right, now press pause, complete the activity, and then come back for the second set of instructions. Now, you are going to make some very creative and salty salt art. For this, you'll need a piece of cardboard or colored paper, some liquid glue, and some salt. Write out the words salt and light on your paper with glue, and then cover the glue with salt. Let it dry for a little bit, and then shake away the extra salt. It will be a great reminder that we are called to be salt and light. 
This is our last week to have a chance to win a $10 gift card to Timmy's or A&W, so please send me a picture of your salt art. Parents, please post a picture on our Lake Point Kids Facebook page or email to me at rachel at lakepoint.church. Be sure to check back next week to see what our new weekly prize will be. Parents, please take a moment right now to fill out the online connection card available on the Lake Point app. It's like your guest book, letting us know who is watching and helping us stay connected to you. It also allows you to sign up for our latest Lake Point initiatives and opportunities. Friends, let me say a huge thank you to so many of you who participated in our Brighten Your Day campaign. Over the summer months, we had more than 300 pictures dropped off by you, put into bundles, and handed out to blessed people in our community. Things are wrapping up now with our campaign, so no more pictures are needed. However, perhaps you can continue to draw some more pictures so you can give them away yourselves to people and brighten someone's day. Just a reminder that you can go back and watch your favorite Lake Point Kids family experiences on our YouTube channel or on our Lake Point app in the Family Resources section. Thanks for tuning in, friends. I'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Remember, God created you to share His story.